Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to White Packer Plays The Iron Oath. This has been a while. It's been in early access for a year and a half, and we haven't played it since then. We played it at the start there. So we have a campaign, but we're going to start afresh. So this is a turn-based tactical RPG where we control a band of mercenaries. We have to try and get them to get them to survive and discover the secrets of this fantasy realm known as the realm of Kaloon. I think there's quite a lot of dialogue. That's part of the game here. I'll do my best. Let's get strapped in and delve into this game, shall we? New campaign. We don't want to be your skulls. I don't know if I can pick this myself. I just have to keep randomizing it until something looks good. Oh, there was. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. Oh, here we go. Never mind. I don't know what's going on. How do we change the color? Flag background and then color. I feel like a maroon. Oh, it completely changes the background color. I don't know. Something like that looks pretty good. All right. Uh, into company name. What should we do here? The Falcons. You see, dragons are dragon slayers, aren't they? So I guess that doesn't really make sense. But that's okay. The Falcons. Your title, Sir Falcon. Doesn't ask me for my name. It's just Sir. Uh... Starting point: New game. Iron Man. Aging penalties. If enabled, once character reaches old age, they can potentially retire from your company or die. If this is disabled, they will never retire slash die of old age. Oh, I guess we'll leave that on. Now nah, we'll go to the White Falcons. Here we go. I guess we should have a White Falcon. Done. Okay. Battle hardened warlord emperor custom. Start with a thousand gold. Normal amount of enemies. Enemies have a moderate amount of health. New dungeon modifier every 50 turns. 850 normal amount of enemies. Enemies have slightly increased health and power. Oof. Warlords intended for those seeking a challenge. A firm grasp of the game mechanics are recommended. Oof. Well, let's go Warlord, shall we? This could be regretful pressing this button here. Oof! I do like a bit of a challenge. In an era all but forgotten, the gods once lived alongside humanity in the heart of Kaloon. However, an unknown cataclysmic event plunged the world into dark age. History was lost to time, and so too were their gods. In their absence, a rebuilding of humanity was left to contend a rebuilding humanity was left to contend with the emergence of a great being of darkness from the void every few decades in an event called the scourge scourge the dragon's arrival would bring death and disease to the land those afflicted by the dragon's blight would lose their minds and bodies as they slowly became abominations of flesh and outcasts to society known as the blighted Every few decades, so they don't know when it happens. I'm guessing they've dealt with it because we're not all extinct. I don't know if it's getting worse and worse. So the gods have gone. And now they're all by themselves with this great darkness of the void. Great times they live in. Despite centuries of effort from the Vanguard Order and the realm's greatest heroes, no lasting victory against the dragon could be achieved. Humanity has now come to accept the inevitability of the Scourge as part of life, enduring or in some cases thriving despite it. With whispers of an impending Scourge circulating, you and your company find yourselves in a burial crypt not far from the city of Andalon. A simple retrieval of smuggled supplies, or at least that's what your employee had promised. 
never simple, is it? Always something going on. All right, decent loading times. Just incinerate him. Yurik! Damn grave robbers. Stay sharp. No doubt his companions will have heard of that. Everyone stands still. Tension rising as they grip their weapons tight and scan the room for further hostiles. You hear a muffled shout from someone in the adjacent corridor, likely directed towards their now deceased associate. The sound of quickening footsteps soon follows and three figures burst out of a doorway to the far side of the room. Damn. Should have got an alert from the others. Eric shakes his head, eyes fixed on the enemy. No time for that. We've got a, no choice but to fight. All right. What are you? Bandit scum. Survey the battlefield by using the WASD key. You can hold, you can also pan with the mouse. WASD is nothing. Can't do anything though. Mind that archer and find yourself some cover. On their turn, each character can move as many hexes as the movement state allows. By moving into a green hex, they can still perform an action afterwards. To cover more ground, they can sprint into one of the grey hexes. Doing so will end their turn. You can swap places with an ally by moving on to the location. Swapping is useful for setting up an attack or for getting an ally out of harm's way. Hold shift, you can draw a custom path if you want to do zigzags through the world. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to forget that part. Uh, but if you want to go around chasms and stuff, I guess. To undo a movement, click the undo button on the hop bar or press the assigned E key. If you have taken damage or triggered a stage hazard, you will be unable to undo your movement. Let's move the storm caller into cover by clicking left mouse button on the indicated hex. Bam. If you don't have a desirable action to perform, you can delay a character's turn until the end of the round by hitting the wait button. Alternatively, you can end a character's turn by using the guard action, which provides temporary bonus to defense and evasion. Click the wait button to delay the Stormcaller's turn. All right, your character's unique abilities have a limited number of charges available during the course of the dungeon. Charges can be restored by camping or by using certain provisions. If an ability runs out of charges, it can still be used, but at a large cost to the character's health. Huh. With the enemy advancing on us, we can set a trap by using the Prior Lance's Return to Cinder ability on the indicated hex. Return to Cinder. Mark a vacated cell, a vacant cell with fire trap. Targets, targets who step on the trap will take a damage and be pushed away the indicated direction, ending their turn. So it lasts for a certain amount of time. Set it up. Ooh. Oh, I thought this 50 was um, his health, but up here. Makes sense. As you can see, it is important to pay attention to any potential hazards when positioning your units. Some abilities are able to push or pull targets by forcing targets into obstacles and terrain. You can inflict bonus damage and other harmful effects. Move the uh, Pulagist into position and use his Crescent Wave ability to push the enemy into the pit. I love this. I love this ability. All right, we're going to move down here. We should have moved a bit more carefully, shouldn't we? It was a test. They could do that. And you just fall down and you're like, we told you you could press shift. But did you? No. Now he's gone. Uh, keep Lion protected at all costs by, by moving away from him. We have to move up here. I guess we can't. So there's no, like, attack of opportunities. Wait, it's going to tell us right now. Every melee unit on the battlefield exerts a zone of control on Hex's adjacent to the position. Why didn't he do that? Another unit cannot leave. Okay, leave. Without suffering the attack of opportunity from their foes, this mechanic helps to lock enemies and prevent them from reaching vulnerable characters. Got ya. Conserve your stamina and keep them busy. Each character has a basic attack available to them. Unlike abilities, basic attacks have their unlimited uses, but are subject to an accuracy and evasion check. Oh, do these not have an evasion and accuracy? That's pretty cool. Perform a basic action on the enemy by clicking left mouse button on the indicated egg. Basic sword light. 
Bam. You have a clear view of the archer. Take him down. Line of sight. Most attacks and abilities are subject to line of sight. When a target, a red eye indicating that there is no line of sight, while a yellow eye indicates a partial line. Large obstacles such as pillars can block line of sight entirely. When a character has no vision or an enemy, they are unable to directly target them. Smaller obstacles such as barrels or crates, character will partially obscure line of sight under the right circumstances. A target who is partially visible will receive 50% less damage. By taking cover directly behind a small obstacle, you can look over the obstacle and gain full vision, but the enemy will only be able to hit you for 50% damage. I get you. The Stormcaller's Conduit ability can be devastating a single enemy from range, but it takes a few turns to channel. You can see where in the timeline you will be. Uh, look at the blue indicator on the arrow. Select the Conduit ability and target the enemy archer. Bam. Bam. So it's going to go after the archer has a turn which would normally be bad does it target any cell within range and channel for five turns dealing massive lightning damage to the occupant who's going to get a chance to fire at us um avoiding attacks of opportunity with the nearest enemy stunned the pyrolancer can safely move past the zone of control without incurring the attack of opportunity Attacks of opportunity can also be avoided by using abilities that incorporate movement or utilizing the swap action. Let's aid the guardian and sprint to engage the target. We're coming, fair lass. Oh, apart from getting hit all the time. Oh, he's stunned. Bam, just obliterated. Finish him off. Basic attack. What's the chance of hitting? 76%. We got him. Quick drink. Your pugilist has killed an enemy and gained morale, which is represented by the white bar under each character's portrait. Morale is a character's state of mind for the current mission. Morale is gained and lost through various combat triggers. Landing a killing blow will increase morale or suffering a critical strike from an enemy will lower it. When morale is under 25, there's a chance for the character to delay or pass their turn. Additionally, a character with low morale will acquire more fatigue from the mission and will also lose loyalty towards the company. Come on, guys, just act as a group. When morale is over 75, all negative conditions applied to the character will have their duration reduced by one. To the minimum of one. Oh. Targets are considered flanked when you have two people occupying opposite sides of them and you get 15 extra damage and cannot miss. If your if you if your chance to hit with a basic attack is low, it's best to try and flank the enemy first in order to guarantee a hit or use the ability instead. Let's move the guardian to flank this person here. He feels a little bit worried. As he should be. It's four against one. Time to end this. Ranged shot. Action shot. Oh, it's just blood and guts everywhere. Good job. Killed two. Killed one. None. Just took all the damage, mate. Small heal health potion. And some scrap. Yurik sheaths his weapon, gazing around the room to make sure all are unharmed. Everyone all right then? Lion. Lion. Gestures at some blood on Yurik's arm. Never mind us. You certainly took a beating. Yurik glances down at his injury and scoffs. What's this? He wipes the blood, making him smear a merry mess of it. Nothing tone won't heal. I'll be fine. You turn as a familiar voice rings out distantly behind you. Though the words are unclear. Is that you, Vaughn? Vaughn dashes into the room and stops, kneeling over to catch his breath. He looks up with a relieved smile. Glad to see you're all still with us. We heard the fighting, figured you could handle it, but I didn't want to take the chance. And the others? Vaughn points back at the direction he came from. Oren and the rest are still searching. Surely there are better places to stash supplies, but I suppose smugglers had little choice. At least we're getting paid to well to retrieve them. We've been in worse situations. 
could be stuff everywhere around here. This could this book could sell. Aye. That we have, boss. Was just hoping my last job would be free of surprises. I can't fault you for what for uh, wanting out, but I wish you'd reconsider. Uh, Van smiles faintly and places his hand firmly on Eric's shoulder. This life takes toll. Takes a toll, my friend. I've seen more death than any man should. His face goes dark for a brief moment. How do I stop this from moving? I think I had this problem last time. You can now stop it from moving, which is great. But I remember it was tricky. Um, his face goes dark for a brief moment, remembering all the friends you've lost. You tr your trusted advisor, Alaric, steps out from beside you with hands raised, bringing a halt to the conversation. All right, now. There's plenty of time for talk later. It's going to take a while to score this place, scale this place, even with the others' help. Right, I'd better get back to Torin and the rest before they find themselves lost. Watch your bracks. There, be, there may be more of those thieves in here, or worse yet. Barn looks back over his shoulder, nodding in acknowledgement. Let's move on. Let's continue. Most actions take a while. Taken what? Most actions you take while exploring a dungeon will cost time. The passage of time can have harsh consequences and are represented by the time meter. One of 98. Uh, in the bottom right. We should begin exploring. Use the left button to move the party adjacent to a tile. Bam. Bam. Scouting can be used to reveal identity of a nearby event. And can help you avoid traps and other surprises. Wait, this is way different than last time. There's no fog of war. Uh, by scouting an enemy location, you prevent them from being able to ambush you. It does have limited uses, so it should be used sparingly. Oh, that's different as well. I think. We can scout three times, maybe. Click the right mouse button to toggle scout mode, and then use left mouse button to an unexplored event to reveal it. That's this 27 scouts. It's just treasure, guys. Just relax. Let's go. When interacting with an exploration event, you'll often have multiple choices available to you, sometimes costing various amounts of time. Your character will have their own op opinion on the choices you make, which can affect the overall loyalty of the camp company. You spot a discarded pack up ahead, likely to drop in haste by the grave robbers when you alerted them. Don't expect to find much value, but it's not like they'll be coming back. No sense in leaving it behind. Let's take whatever looks good. I can't see what their reactions will be. Receive bandages and tools. Everyone was happy about that. Using provisions during exploration. Provisions can be used both in and out of combat. While exploring, you can access your provisions inventory in the bottom left menu or by pressing I like other actions. Provisions used during exploration have their own associated time costs. Is it I? Yeah. You saying we should heal the guy or not? Stabilize industry injuries, dispel bleed and grievous wounds and restore 50 HP. What has he lost? He's lost about 100. So that would be a waste. Just, he said it was just a, just a scratch. All right, so let's um, scout this area. So toggle scouting by pressing C. Oops, no, that's camp. During long mis longer missions, you can make camp in order to rest your party and apply various bonuses. Some locations are safer than others. We should pick a spot that has fewer points of entry, less than the chance of being spotted upon an enemy. I didn't mean to press camp then. I was just right mouse button. It told us that. It's a question mark. Let's go. You signal a halt as faint, distant rumbling becomes audible. Steadily growing louder and closer with each passing moment. You look up, noticing cracks forming in the ceiling as a small rock breaks off and falls to the floor around you. Yurik bumps against you and tugs at your arm, urging you to run. It's a cave-in. We need to move. Breaking into stride behind the rest of your party, you steal a glance back to see the corridor collapsing in a cascade of falling stone. You cross the threshold into another chamber diving into the ground as the path behind is quickly closed off by crumbling structure. 
A cloud of dirt and dust obscures your vision, but the rumbling and crashing comes to a halt as the last few pieces of debris can hear tumbling into position. Everyone okay? You look around as the dust settles. Aside from a few coughing fits, everyone seems to be uns unscathed. What the hell was that? An earthquake? Might have been. All those grave robbers tried to force their way into this into a, this place some. Some place they shouldn't. Yurik inspects the caved in passage, lightly kicking some of the rubble. Regardless, we'll have to find another way out. What are the others? And the supplies we're supposed to locate. Yurik places a assuring hand on Roland's shoulder. Van and them were on the other side of the crypt. I suspect they're fine, or at least I hope. Our priority is to find them. Hopefully they'll already retire, retrieve the supplies. We could do with a little luck. So this is a dead end. But there could be something there. Is that what you're telling me? Because these are... It's intriguing, because I want to know. We're going to have to use a shovel or something, are we? This way is completely blocked off. We need to look for another way. Well, okay. Makes sense. Here is another way. Your path is blocked by a pile of rubble from the recent cave-in. You're a step forward and climbs atop to gauge the severity of the blockage. Ah, uh, it's not that bad. I can see a clear path ahead. Just need to move enough of this rubble so we can squeeze through. He turns looking down to address you. Any ideas? Who am I in this group? Move the rubble by hand, which costs 15 turns. Let's clear this quickly, forgetting the risk. Blast a hole with magic. He's a rash person. He loves it. Anyone feel like a shoveling? Use tools to clear the path. Eight turns. This is way more turns than we had last time, I think. But you use them up heaps quicker. That's kind of, you know, I think. Um, who wants to shovel? We got one. With a affirming nod, Eric grasps the shovel and begins to dig. Soon, clearing a path just wide enough for everyone to fit through. Your party crawls through the gap in the rubble and comes out the other side. Sliding down the pile and back into onto solid ground. You see the flickering light of a torch being cast into the room from the connecting hall. Illuminating more of your surroundings as it nears. Your party forms up, preparing for combat as the flames bear, bearer rounds the corner. But it's only Van. Easy now. It's just me. I thought this whole damn place was going to come down on top of us. The structure groans and rebels for a moment, and he glances around with some concern. It might yet. Yurik mentioned motions back towards the collapse. This whole section is caved in. We'll need to find a new way out of here once we're done. I figured as much. Torin and the others are already set to finding one. I take it you haven't found any supplies yet, either? Unfortunately not. Let's hope they're not buried in stone. Regroup with Torin and secure an exit. Van will find you when the job's done. We've got too many people in your party. We can't. You can't join us. Sure thing, boss. He quickly scans your surroundings and leans in close, his expression turning deadly serious. There's something else. All that communication commotion has disturbed the dead within these walls. We've already put down a few of the bastards, but you'd best stay alert for more. Thanks for the warning. We've got some skeletons up ahead. What's the point in scouting? Maybe... Maybe like if we find ant guys, we don't get ambushed. Stoggle, toggle scouting. Does it take a turn up? Takes three turns up. Combat. Let's do it. Kabam. These aren't skellies. During the deployment phase, you can reposition your party ahead of combat. Deployment zones will vary from fight to fight, and you'll have to make do with what's available. Uh, left mouth click and move people around. Knowing where enemies can move and attack will help you position your party optimally. To view an enemy's movement and attack range, you can press the tab over the character character's sprite. Once you are satisfied with your formation, click on the start combat button. She's got, she's an eagle lady. It's a person with a blade. It's quite unique. And then just a standard outlaw enforcer. Well, I can't seem to... I could push her into there.
I like how they look at the person. That's kind of cool. That's quite nice as well. It's instantly collapses. If he takes a bit more damage, it's fine because we can heal him afterwards. Um, I guess there's two over here. We put a little trap down here because there's not too many places it's going to go. Start combat. Wait, who's starting first? She's going straight for it. Hmm. I guess if that's the case, what, what other skills do you have, my friend? Who are you? Who are you? Dash to an enemy cell and strike an adjacent enemy twice. Bam, bam. The one old one, two. Pushing them back. Well, he's just going to take damage. Can't do much about it. Unless we... Get far enough away. No. She can hit us wherever we are. But she can't... She can't move around there. I don't think. I don't know why the blue marks are all the way up there. But we'll find out. So she's going to attack us instantly. We can't do anything about that. Okay, let's start. Oh, don't move that way. Oof. An eagle to the face. Or a falcon, maybe. Ranged enemies can pack a punch. But they can encounter with a line of sight or engaging them in melee. When their line of sight is obscured, their range is decreased by 50%. Uh, this can be achieved by taking cover. Large obstacles can obscure their sight. Covering. If cover is not an option, you can jump on top of a ranged enemy and engage them in melee. By doing this, the ranged unit can only attack adjacent enemies and their damage is reduced by 50% when doing so. Okay, makes sense. Uh, we don't want to stand here though. Potentially not. Apparently it's fine. What if I kick her into a wall? Does that... Does that do something? Dash to an enemy cell. We can't do that anymore. Let's smack... Yeah, looks like it. She days. She just takes extra damage. Oh, she's sharpening her weapons. Getting ready. That was a bad move from her. Maybe this guy can take her out with him. If we move here, we'll get attacked. Apparently I can walk on these without a problem. Or I could do something else. Heal a single target within range for 155. Or damage and blind an adjacent enemy for one round. Oh, I can't do either of that. We'll just stand over here. On a dangerous spot. So if I do this and she moves, target any cell. And it's going to happen after she moves. It's problematic. A ball of lightning that hits the primary target and arcs to adjacent targets. We just go for a hit. How far can I hit people? Heaps far. That's still 50% damage. All right, we'll take it. 62. Now let's put a little fire. What? Oh, I can... I can say which way she should fall. Move. Seems pretty damn good. And she's back again. 50% less damage, though. 43. You can remove negative conditions from your character with cleansing abilities. What condition? Yeah. Uh... Using an antidote on them, doing this will provide temporary immunity to all conditions for a few rounds. Not all harmful effects can be to cleanse, such as injuries or flanking status. Remarked. We could dash, hit this guy twice, or hit her twice. Bam. Oof. Are you... Did you... Can you see traps? Because I feel like you would have just ran there. All right, let's take her out. Take her out. I feel like we need to heal as well, though. Um, I 
Well, she bamboozled us, didn't she? This is going to take too long again. It's going to move out of the way of it. 100 and this just does more damage. Instant. Uh, we can move first, can't we? I don't want to move. Protect me, friend. I'm a weak ranged unit. Missed attacks. Your attacks missed without a proper setup. Basic attacks have a risk of missing. In order to guarantee a hit, make sure to flank, stun, or stagger your target first, especially if the evasion is high. Targets are considered flanked. Yep. If you're unable to flank a target, you can use can stun or stagger them instead. Is that staggering them? Is it? No debuff came up when I hit her like that. Okay. All right, fair enough. Um, I guess I'll just go and hit her. She's causing us problems. Have I got like ranged? No. So that would, but I, I can only do it in like, I can't stand here and hit her. Mm -hmm. I'm bleeding and what? Staggered? While bleeding, any action besides waiting or guarding will inflict 28 da 38 damage. Hmm. And using a band-aid, is that a turn? Have a look. Oh my gosh, it is. Ow, hit me in the back. I feel like we don't want to keep taking so much damage. But there's lots more fights to come. Um, let's get over here so it's easier to flank him. And we'll just go for a standard hit. I guess we should use an ability. Because then we get a 100% hit chance. Oh, jeez. Well, we're getting completely owned over here. Damage and blind adjacent enemies for one round. And disables a taxable opportunity. Well, that's not going to help us. Jeez, these are, this is way harder than I remember. Um, I don't think she'll move, but she's attacking both of us. We can't push her. And she's going to move. I'm, I'm sure she's smart enough to move if I do this to her. She's got a lot of life. Let's give it a go. Why is... Damage a single adjacent target and apply burn to them. This guy's nearly dead. What did he do? Did he miss? We'll just do standard hits here. A lot of defense though. Oof! Oh, she's gonna get smashed now. Burned! Can you heal at all? You need to come over here and get healed, mate. Stand behind her. Gets another go. Jeez, we're getting smashed. Don't actually want him to have a turn yet. Oof. Oh, we can wait. He's at the end. I want to heal here. I feel like this guy can take the healing potion. And we'll heal this guy. He's going to need two healing potions. Alright, fine. We'll get you. Fine, matey. Yeah. Who needs that morale? Our main dude here gets being hit. Alright, we'll check what this is. I can't. Have I used all this up? I've got zero left. I have used it all up. So, camping. I feel like we need a camp. 
We got zero camping supplies. Never mind, we're not camping, guys. No escape. We got to keep going. Uruk runs a hand along a wall of interred dead. Read, reading the inscriptions on each nameplate before moving on to the next, he stops at one, peering closely and double-checking the name before turning with a relief in his voice. This is the one we were told to look for, boss. About time. Let's hope the contents are still intact. Reaching with both arms into the dark recess, Uruk firmly gra grabs hold of a coffin. Its ancient and rotting wood creak in protest. He gingerly slides the coffin partway out and pushes the lid aside, rummaging around briefly before pulling out the stashed pack with care. Taking a peek inside to confirm the contents, he walks over to you and hands off the bag. It's all there. No damage to the vials from what I can see. What does our, what does our employee want with all of them anyway? Alderic interjects, eager to share his knowledge on the matter. This here is a cure for the blight, and or, or at least it slows the process. The vanguard keeps it tightly controlled, though, only treating those who pledge themselves to the order. As such, it's highly sought after. After on the, after on the black market, oh yeah, and it's why our employee is paying so well. At least our efforts haven't been wasted. Let's regroup with Van and hope that they've found an exit. Come on, Van. We've got a crown or more events. I feel like the fact that we can't camp. All dungeons have a main path which leads to your objective and various side paths that branch off from it, denoted by a fog covering tiles. Side paths carry more dangers to your party, but they are also provide more opportunities for rewards. It's important to consider the state of your party and the task at hand before venturing down a side path as things could turn sideways very very quickly i think we are chipper <laughs> we're not looking great you can't stop me this is a test for people that aren't thinking right oh jeez nearly spilled coffee over myself uh well we got no toggle scouting we're going a set of tracks lie before you on the ground these tracks don't seem to belong to that last Seem to belong to the group we we took out. Let's keep going then. Maybe there's some fortune. A lone satchel catches her eye on the ground ahead. Though small, it may contain things of worse. Open the satchel. Antidote and 80 gold. That might come in handy. Well, there we go. It was worth it. Now we've got the crown. The crown jewels. You hear a sudden movement in the darkness ahead. The sound of bones rattling and steel scraping across the floor. Bright green eyes turn towards you. And the undead begin letting out a bone chilling screech as it shuffles forward and into the light of your torches. Moving faster than its size, an awkward gaunt gate, go gate would suggest was possible. Prepare yourself. Fight. Enemy traits. Bosses and elite enemies will spawn with a unique little crown on them. They are an important thing to consider when facing those foes. You can view these traits and their effects by hovering over the enemy portrait on the right side of the screen. And then mousing over the trait's name on the tooltip. Here we go. We've got piercing. Vulner resistance to per piercing makes sense. Vulnerable to crushing. Immune to bleeding and fear. Trait, backstab. It deals 30% more damage when targeting its flank. When the target is flanked. And immune to freeze condition. Roger that. Oop. Who's that? This guy at the back. Okay. 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 Well, let's move you there. You can hide behind there. We've set up a little trap. I don't know what you're doing start combat we didn't use any potions we were silly billies it's coming straight in max hp down look at him he's got he's got 35 hp left is it even worth healing him up turn oh, he's only got 180 health 
Instant death. Maybe. What about our traps, though? Oh, this guy's an archer. Are you serious? So if he moves one, two, three up, he'll then move that one, two, three up, which would be one, two, three up. It's perfect. He can hit me in the face. Can't do much about it. Let's take this guy out. Lankin, hit. See you later. Ping. Oh, he moved into the wrong space, did he? So there's no point in me waiting. If I hit them into each other. He doesn't have masses of HP, though. What's his movement? We could just stand out of out of range. And maybe he'll even get closed up. I don't know. Go up here. Wait, my friend. Wait. Oh, wait. He's not going to do anything. Guard, my friend. Guard. What the heck? We've got stones falling on us now. It's going to go right at the end. Now I'm going to move him first. Well, that's not what I wanted. If I wait, will he go behind Crash or before it? stuff me up if I wait can I still move or oh, he's ready to be pushed I feel like we heal this person oof all right well it'll go before him if we move does that affect anything Oh, are you serious? Wait, 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 wait. I can undo it by pressing that button. There we go. Can we move through each other? Where do we think he's going to move? If I was him, I would move right here. Or maybe he would move there because he can whack one of us. Can we look at his abilities? Passive abilities decay and reanimate. Reanimates two rounds after their death unless their corpse is destroyed. Because would he walk down this way and up or up and across? No idea. What's he hitting there? But he's funny if you could make him walk back and I guess that uh, I don't know I don't know we'll just put it there and hope he steps on it he's definitely going to take a shot this time he didn't take a shot so I can't move afterwards I can get ready to knock him in there though but if I do that oh jeez stuffed up this wait why is this changed um i don't know what's going on here so if i go down here now then oh no his now he's in front of it i'm confused let's just hit him standard shall we oh, i could hit him into this instead Or I could stand here and hope he runs into me. There we go. He's not... Didn't the other guy get dazed? Oh, it depends where I whack him into it. Now, I feel like she should try and run at this guy. Full pelt. And then... Just take it. Whack him. Deal damage. Two targets in a row. Second target takes 75%. Can he burn? He can burn. Ow. Holy. Jamolis. Can I take a potion? Drink that, mate. When's that? It's going all the way up there. It's not great. So close to be able to kill him. He does get a turn. 
That's a good weight, actually. If we stand here, we can get a guaranteed hit. Still not death, though. Wait there. We're going to have to do it. Get that guaranteed. Kill your first boss. Hit of a thousand hits. All right, now you are on me. Um, I don't think he'll move from there. Well, we don't want to waste stuff. Oh, he's so weak. Some enemies have passive abilities. These undead skeletons are able to reanimate after being defeated. To defend them from being reanimated, we'll need to target and destroy the piles of bones. If you want to see more details, you can look at their details box. Oh, specifically this guy. Okay. See you later. Rip those bones into shreds. Buckler. And some weak ale. We're going to need that weak ale. We've been battered around every which way. All right, out we come. Your party comes to a standstill as muffled shouts and ringing steel reverberate down the corridor towards you. Yurik unleashes his lance, unsheaths his lance, mo motioning the rest of you forward as he breaks into stride, barreling towards the sound of battle. That must be the others. Hurry! Are they getting hit from both sides here? Never mind. They are destroying them quick. Just firing at them point blank. Your party comes to a standstill as muscle. I think we read this, didn't we? Yeah. This must be the others. Hurry. With the last of the undead dealt with, Van hails at you across the chamber with a flick of his hand a relieved smile forming upon his face as he well uh as he strides closer to meet you did you find it then the exit's just beyond here been trying to keep it clear of the dead but they just keep coming a pile of bones near torrent's feet suddenly begin to rattle and the eyes of the skull reignite in a bright green as unseen forces attempt to re reassemble the skeleton Torin grunts and steps forward, crushing the skull beneath his heel and grinding it into the fine dust. He looks up at you with a satisfied grin. You took long enough. Van, here, was getting all worked up and talking, taking, thinking the worst. The crypt groans once more and the ground beneath you shakes ever so slightly. I don't expect this structure will hold much longer, sir. We best not linger. Yurik raises his torch high, inspecting the ceiling above as small pebbles break away from it. Good advice, I reckon. We got what we came for. Let's not tempt fate. After a mission, you want to seek treatment for any injuries your party has incurred. While an injury, injured character can still fight, injury penalties make them less effective. In order to heal an injury, you must pay for the rest of for their treatment at a city's infirmary. Some injuries require prompt treatment, otherwise they risk permanent damage or death. Did we get any permanent injuries? I don't think so. Look at the damage this guy took. That archer provisioned, refunded. Hmm. We got 1,101. But our gear's durability is going down. We've got a lot of fatigue. All right. As the last light of day begins to fade, you spot your company's camp not far ahead. The flickering flames of bonfires dance against the darkening sky above the horizon. You stroll into camp. The celebrations of Van's retirement already well underway. After many hours of swapping stories and sharing drinks, all eyes fall on Van as he steps atop a nearby crate with da drink in hand, raising his voice to pierce through the ruckus. Now you all know I'm not one for our lengthy speeches, but I'd just like to say that it's been an honour to fight alongside each of you over the years. I dare say that even I consider some of you among my friends. 
He grins, met a, qu a chorus of laughters and cheer. It hasn't been many, been an easy road, but I've been fortunate man. Not everyone gets out of the mercenary life on their own terms. I hope you all one day get the same chance. He raises his cup in a toast. To you, my friends. There has never been a finer company. Here, here. The crowd responds with a burst of applause and cheers, enthusiastically raising their drinks and sending a shower of ale through the air. Don't waste that ale. Your gaze is met by Vaughn as he points his cup towards you and you nod your head in friendly acknowledgement before turning around about and striding off to find your tent. With the celebrations continuing in your absence, you brush aside the flap into your tent and settle inside, discarding your weaponry and tossing it near your bedroll. You turn to find Alric in your presence, no doubt eager to discuss business. I'm hoping I'm not disturbing you, sir. I was on my way to pay the horses a visit and prepare us for tomorrow's travel. He gestures to the back pack slung around your shoulder, containing the contraband you recently retrieved. It's probably best if I store those vials in one of the carriages. You gently slide the pack off your shoulder and place it in his upturned hand. Well then, I'd best take care of this. He nods respectfully and turns, pushing aside the tent flap with an outstretched arm and briskly walking out into the night. You turn your attention to your desk. Its surface covered with the disorganized papers and maps, illuminated by the faint glow of a candle. Pulling up a stool, you sit down and begin to pour over one of the maps, charting out tomorrow's course. From outside, the sound of laughter and poorly played music drifts into your tent. We've got to buy better min minstrels. After some time, with the celebrations audibly winding down, you step outside your tent and into the cool evening air. Varn approaches your side, mounted atop a horse, despite... Despite the, the smile on his face, there's a trace of sadness in his eyes. It's time then. Aye. He leans down and pats the side of his horse. Got my saddle loaded? Figured I'd sneak out without making much fuss. He rises from his seat and dismounts, turning to face you with one hand extended. Just wanted to say thanks, boss, for everything. You return the gesture with a smile, gripping his hand and giving it a firm shake. Any chance I can re convince you to stay? He steps back and chuckles. If you'd asked me a week, maybe. Last week, maybe. But this last job cleared any doubts I've had. I've survived this long. Reckon I'd be a fool to press my luck any further. Fair enough, friend. We'll always have a place for you at if you change your mind. You hear a shout and turn to see Yurik stepping towards you, his young nephew in tow. Sorry to interrupt. He tilts his head, gesturing behind him. But Je Jedrick, 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 here wanted to see you off. Is that so? Van smiles, stepping towards the boy and slapping a hand down his, on his shoulder. I know we haven't finished your training, but my uncle's more than capable of finishing the job. Jedrick, I know. I know. He looks up, conveying admiration. I'm going to miss you, though. Aye. Van grins, reaching out to tussle the boy's hair. And I, you. I've half, I've, well, uh, I've half a mind to send him with you. Less danger on a farm. And God knows how your old bones could use the help. Ah. There's a few good years in me yet. But you're both welcome to visit any time. He exhales deeply, stealing a, stealing a glance towards the road. I'd best be getting going then. Take care of yourself, would you? He nods farewell, turning towards his horse and hoisting himself into the saddle. Clicking his heels, the horse trots off, and you watch him disappear into the dark of night, illuminated only by the moonlight above. You and Auric glance back at the sound of approaching footsteps to find Torin wedging himself between you, the two of you, his heavy hands firmly planted on each of your shoulders. Company won't be the same without him, I'm afraid. Indeed it won't. As Yurik and Torin take their leave, you look around the camp, surveying the aftermath of the festivals. Aside from a few inebriated men and women who remain slumbered by the fires, it seems that most have turned in for the night. With days of travel yet ahead, you think it wise to follow suit. We have finished the prologue. Kind of. 
You bolt upright from your sleep, awakened by the blares of a horn from somewhere in your camp. An alarm's been raised. The sounds of a frenzied battle are all around you. And you scrabble out of your bedroll, taking up a nearby sword. Eldrick bursts into your tent, an orange glow briefly visible behind him as he flaps flung aside. Sir, we're under attack. Winded and he winded, he takes in a few deep breaths. There was no warning. The horses, the carriages. He raises his hands, trembling with frustration. Everything's been taken. We need to regroup the others. Have you seen Uruk? Eldrick wipes the sweat from his brow, shaking his head. Couldn't find him. It, with his nephew, I hope. You meet Eldrick's eyes and nod in agreement. With a firm grip on your sword, you step past him, reaching your other hand towards the tent flap and preparing to step out. You glance over your shoulder. Let's move. Stay close. You emerge from the tent head on a swivel as you attempt to survey the situation. The camp is almost entirely ablaze, the heat and the smoke stinging your eyes and obscuring your vision. You make your way ahead, your feet suddenly catching on something as you fall forward and scrabble, scramble to stay upright. Recovering, you steal a glance back at the obs obs obstruction. Blech. One of your companions is dead. An arrow flies by you, narrowly missing, but finding a target nonetheless. Eldrick screams out in pain behind you, legs collapsing under him as he falls hard to the ground. You turn back, reaching out a hand to pull him up, but he waves you off. Leave me. I'll be no use in a fight. You follow his gaze down to his leg as blood covers the arrows stuck through it. Go, take my bow, shoot for me. You turn and continue onward, staying low to the ground. As you move, eyes scanning for any friendly faces through the smoke. Not 50 yards ahead, you spot four of your companions through the haze, huddled together with weapons drawn against an overwhelming number of assailants. Sucking air into your burning lungs, you urge your leg forward in a desperate attempt to reach them. A figure suddenly appears from the corner of your eye, and with a flash of pain, the world goes dark. Surrounded, Roland's head whips around, searching frantically for any possible escape as the raiders edge closer. Beyond the ring of enemies, Torin and a few other familiar faces emerge from the darkness with bloodied weapons drawn. Though they don't seem inclined to make any urgent use of them. What are you waiting for, Torin? Help us! The raiders eye the raiders eye Torin as he confidently steps among them, each seemingly unconcerned by his presence. Perhaps even emboldened by it. Sorry, friends. A twisted smirk forms in the corner of his mouth as he slides an arrow from his quiver. We'll make this quick. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I thought this was Torin. This is Torin. Uh, Roland glares at Torin with a wild fury in his eyes, arms trembling as they level their weapon towards him. You damn traitors! Have you no honor? Torin scoffs. Honor achieves little in this world. Glancing sideways at his accomplice complices, he raises a hand, signaling them to attack. I trust you lot can handle the rest. Spare no one. They always do this, don't they? They always walk away when they could have finished the job. Now this one is tricky. I feel like we should try and save it. When the odds are against you, sometimes all you can do is minimize your losses. Use everything at your disposal and don't hold back. There's no saving. There's no saving, guys. We're in this. Um, there's a dog. 180. Well, she looks cool. With tattoos on her eyes. Grant the target 50% power and one movement for two rounds. Target two cells in a row, dealing piercing damage. If a single target is two cells away, they will be pulled forward. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, let's have a look. Movement. Archery is our main concern, isn't it? We should try and jump to those. I guess we should try and kill this guy. Dash to an empty cell and strike adjacent tro flow for foes twice. Oh, wait there. Can I do it down here? That seems the best. Will that work? Won't kill him. 
get close though. Bam! Oh! Jeez Louise. Now we got raised. Oh, don't save. Maimed me. Rooted. Can't move. That's annoying. Alright, Pete's safe though. Let's get in her face. Or should we heal this guy? He's got to turn. Do we have any provisions? No provision. We've just woken up. We don't have any provisions. We kind of need to get in her face. This guy's, this lady's just going to have to help him out. Does she not even move? Wow. Okay. Blinding doesn't help us. Blind reduces accuracy, evasion, disables attack of opportunity. Oh, it actually does help us a lot. So there's a 75% chance that she's going to miss. What's his movement? Okay. All right, well, let's do blinding strike. You can't see nothing. So if we move out the way, we get hurt uh, badly. I feel like we can wait, though. And plan our moves accordingly. This guy could probably just shoot this guy. No, he can only shoot. What's the... I guess there's nothing to... I wish to games would always just let you escape to, to get back to this view. But I guess this view is movement for you. Grants a target that. Targets two cells in a row. I feel like we could just kill that guy with this. That he can get back in the fight, but. Grant's target 50% power and one movement for two rounds restores five more to himself. 91 damage. There's no one in two cells. Maybe we just go here to get a actual kill on the target. I feel like she's kind of a tanky person. That would be bad. Get rid of this dog. Hmm. And lightning would take those two out, so that's not helpful. Can't do much about it. We're going to get attacked again. I guess this would work. Because that would kill him. And he would get another turn after that, wouldn't he? Yeah. Do it. Could even do it there. Alright, I guess we're just going to take this guy out and move. She... Yeah, so the best thing is to move over here. Actually do a kick to make sure it works. What's the... 50%. See you later, mate. Oh, she's got protection. It could be a miss. Oh, you're going to trap behind you. What if I, what if I push you into your own trap? That not happen. So she's not blinded anymore, but she's rooted. Oh, immunities to root. I feel like we should blind her again. Hmm. Should blind this one. We're in trouble with her. Um, I don't know how much damage this guy would do. He's just an adventurer. Do it. So where's the blind? Oh, you did it before the dog moved. This does a little bit more damage. We may as well. Or we could make this guy smack him hard. Fifty percent power, or just do one hundred and thirteen yourself. We know what's better. All right, and then you've got to get out of here. I guess we got to go here to make sure he can't just attack us. We're a little weakling. Boom. 
And if we go up here and hit him once. We may as well use a uh, double kick. He's dead. She misses me. She can only move. Oh, she can attack from... No, she can't. Let's just do it again. It's working. Oh, what a miss. Lightning strike. Now this lady... She's probably got a, a move that like hits all around her. Now she can't move to us. So she, <laughs> she's trapped herself. Oh, was that a crit? So close. All right, nothing else. I could give someone out. What's the range of this? No, I can't. What's this thing on the ground? Oh, she's going to get electrocuted. Yeah. So how much damage is he going to do again? Doesn't matter. We're just going to take her out. I should have used the other thing again. E. Like, we don't need it, but... Oh, was it a crit? Why is it so close up? Boom! Who have they got left? Just this little trapper up here. She's screwed. Fifty percent miss, immune to whatever you just did, and you're dead. Nice. And we got an antidote, and we've leveled up. When a character gains enough experience points, they will level up and receive attribute points and ability points to spend. There are seven attributes for you to put points into and rank up. Health, power, mending, evasion, accuracy, critical strike, and speed. It's a lot. Characters specialize in a few random chosen attributes. These attributes require fewer points to rank up. By leveling up, you'll be able to unlock new abilities for each character. Each class has six abilities to unlock, though they can only be equipped four at a time. Ability points can be spent to upgrade or alter the effects of a character's unique abilities. All of this can be managed in the Managed Roster screen, the G button, or by clicking a character's portrait in the dungeon. Grab that. All right, Codex, Codex Entries Unlocked. Our gear is degrading again. Continue. Opening your eyes, you find yourself sprawled on the ground with a mouthful of dirt and throbbing ache in your head. Despite the ring in your ears, you can hear a muffled voice calling out. A hand grips your shoulder and you jerk at the touch, clawing at the ground and scrabbling onto your back. Easy now. You exhale with a relief at the sight of Yurik leaning over you. The early morning light shining upon his blood splattered face and garments. He straightens up and grabs hold of your extended arm gripping tight as he pulls you upright. Regaining your senses, you look out at the smoking remains of your camp. Anything not taken by the raiders has been taken by the fires. Not much left, not much left is there. The bastards took everything. He closed his eyes, lowering his head and sighing deeply. It was Torin, sir. He betrayed us. Torin? Are you sure? Yurik nods. Wasn't alone either. Damien, Inos, and Naira. His fingers clench into trembling fists. All traitors. Through the anger, you notice a sadness in his eyes, and you realize suddenly that his nephew isn't present. Where's Gedrick? Yurik glances down, slowly shaking his head. I don't know for certain, but I fear he's dead. He sighs. I was with him when the attack started, but we ran into trouble. Told the boy to run, but... He pauses, staring blankly into the distance. As you place a comforting hand on his shoulder, don't remember much else, I'm afraid. Woke up to Eldrick, dragging me out from under the pile of bones. Bodies. He's good. Eldrick. Eldrick, you need, you need to do your wound. Eldrick alive? Are there any others? He had the arrow in his foot. Uh, uh, leg. Aye. He's alive. Managed to find a place to hide and patch himself up. I told him to stay off his feet. 
He snorts, waving a hand over the general area behind him. But he's out there limping around, trying to salvage what he can. Thankfully, there's a few others too. Seems they've managed to kill a whole bunch of, of the group of bastards. His brief smirk fades into a grim expression. I'm afraid that's all though. You turn to see Alderic emerging from a half-burned tent, limping your way and being helped along by the other survivors of your companion company. A relieved smile form on his face as the sight of you. Gods, we're glad to see you, sir. He glances at Yurik. Have you shared the news? I did. Alderic fumbles inside a coat, pulling out a few slightly scorched papers. I found some correspondence in one of their tents. They had been planning this for months, it seems. Alice mutters under their breath. Raiders bastards. Any idea who they're working for? I'm afraid not. Certainly more than just a ragtag group of thieves. They were too well armed and too well organized. Yurik scoffs with disgust, leaning over to spit on the ground. A group of cowards, I say. Easy to achieve victory when half the troops passed out drunk. No doubt Torin and them were counting on that fact. The spineless thieves. Uh, I never did like Torin. None. Always felt uneasy around him. That voice that he had. Alderic furries his brow, a thought creeping into his mind. I can hardly stomach the notion, but could Varn have been involved? Yurik waves a dismissive hand. Not a chance. I knew he and Torin got on well enough, but the man's as loyal as they come. I'm just glad he wasn't here for this. We've lost too much already. Regardless of who's involved, there's a little we can do about it now. At least for now. Yes. So what's our plan, boss? You know I'd follow you anywhere. But I promised my sister I'd look after Gedrick. If he's somewhere, somehow alive, I need to find him. And if he's not, well, he pounds his fist into the other. He's... Us putting those traitors into the ground will have to suffice. Eldrick places a calming hand on Eldrick's shoulders. The boss is right. We have little choice in the matter. I understand you want vengeance. So do I. But we haven't the manpower to meet all the means to seek it right now. And doing so would only get us killed. If we're going to do this, we need to do the first. We need to, need to first restore our numbers. Then I promise we'll hunt down those traitors. You look around your companions, renewing purpose in each of their eyes as they all nod in agreement. Right, then. Let's salvage what we can here. But we're, we'd best travel light. It's a long walk to and Andalon. Receive five scraps. Difficulty options. If you're finding combat too hard or too easy, you can adjust it. This option is disabled during combat and when playing Iron Man hard mode. Okay. As our caravan travels through the world, time will progress. Supplies and general upkeep can be expensive and every day that passes will cost us coin in the oath one year consists of 120 days in the top right corner there are navigation controls allowing you to advance time stop travel and adjust the speed of your caravan given the situation we can't afford a long journey we should make our way to the city of andalon to rest and regroup Ooh, there is a lot of text i will need a little break for my throat but I am enjoying it so far. Got like this protective dome over here. So I remember a decent amount. And it looks like a decent amount of it is the same as what we played before. But, um, you know. We'll um, jump through it and see what we get. See what goes on. So we need to come up here to Angelin. And I'll see you in the next episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. Hit that like button. Helps me out. Get some more people viewing this. Subscribe. For more episodes like this and other games. And I'll put the link in the description. If you want to grab the game for yourself. Thanks so much guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye fucking out.